Welcome back, everybody, to the Oakland A's franchise. It is finally time for postseason baseball in this series. What a journey it's been building this team up from the worst team in baseball to a legitimate championship contender. After six years, we finally get to play our first postseason baseball games. And before that begins, let's see who our opponent is going to be. I got the highlights here of Game 3 between the Detroit Tigers and Seattle Mariners. Will our opponent be a familiar division foe or the Detroit Tigers who, like us, have spent the entire series rebuilding to get to this point? The Mariners in this game pitched Walter Ford, who is an 83 overall, 23-year-old rookie pitcher they called up in September to be their third starter. He's suddenly put into the biggest spot of his young career. In the first inning, he gives up a sharp single and a base hit, putting two on for Luis Arias, who hits one under the glove at short, and the Tigers are able to score the first run in the first, and runners at the corners as the inning continues. Here's all-star Ricky Lynn in the air right field. It gets down, and that scores the second run for Detroit. A fast start on the road with the Tigers going up 2-0. Their pitcher in this game is Jude Dorsey, who is also 23, but he's gotten two full years of big league experience, and he's done a great job so far, but he serves up a solo blast to Cole Young, and the Mariners get their first run. And of course, you worry about the star power this team has. Juan Soto already helped one team win a World Series, he can't believe that was strike three. Dorsey bounces back from his home run to strike out Soto and Julio Rodriguez to finish up the first inning. But after how this began, I wondered if Walter Ford would settle into this game or if we could see the bullpen early. But he did settle in, striking out Urias. And after giving up those early runs, the pitchers really did settle in a bit. Dorsey pitching with runners at the corners gets a strikeout on a high curveball, then faces Soto, and it's a grounder on to first, and they trade zeros for a few innings. Let's take this into the bottom of the fourth inning. 0-2 on Jared Kelnick. He waves over the top as Dorsey picks up the strikeout. We move ahead to the fifth where Riley Green lines it into center, but it's playable for Julio Rodriguez. We had early action from the offenses and not much since. Score holds, with Walter Ford trying to go six innings, just misses DeVarsho, and just missing high, he gives up a two-out walk. Extends the inning for Tamar Johnson. This count goes full and that is missed badly inside. After those two walks, they replace the rookie with the veteran Kevin Gossman, who's now pitching out of their bullpen if he hadn't been demoted, this probably would have been his game to start. He faces Carey Carpenter, and this one is hit out the other way. Soto gives chase at the wall, and it's gone! Carey Carpenter breaks it open with a three-run blast to opposite field. And the Detroit Tigers take a 5-1 lead. Bottom six, Soto turns on it! That ball is gone. I did not see it land. I'm not sure it has. But Juan Soto puts the Mariners back within three. Rodriguez next. Now he turns on one to deep left field. But it does go foul. Mariners hoping for their stars to pick him up here, but fly it into center. It is not a solo home run, just a harmless fly out. Seventh inning, Gossman, another one driven to opposite field. Back and gone, a home run. Spencer Torkelson. The Tigers take a 6-2 lead into the late innings. Let's go top eight. Blake Snell out of the bullpen, and here was a scary moment in this one. That hit him in the head. I don't think I've seen one like this in the show. This did force him out of the game, of course, and he was diagnosed with a head fracture out six plus months. Aaron Bummer comes in, 
And the Mariners do get a double play. Trying to keep this game within reach of a couple home runs. Bottom of the eighth inning. It's Biggio to deep right field. Dorsey gives up a solo shot. And the Tigers would then pull him from the game. And in the ninth inning, it would come down to their closer, Garrett Crochet. 50 of 60 in his opportunities this year. His numbers are really good, but he has blown 10 saves. Season on the line for Seattle. Down three. Soto checks, but goes around. Three and two. Got him looking. Strike three on Soto. He can't believe it. Rodriguez, the next batter. Lined into center field. The base hits. Got to get a couple base runners. Ryan Mountcastle, their big deadline acquisition. Back to Crochet. Double play. And the Detroit Tigers will head to Oakland. And they'll face our Oakland Athletics. Two teams that have been rebuilding throughout the franchise are now among the final eight teams remaining. And they'll go head to head for a berth into the American League Championship Series. A great win there for the Detroit Tigers, and that sets the stage for our first playoff action in the franchise. In today's episode, we are going to go through the first two games of the ALDS, and depending on how those games go, determine what's going to happen next episode. I want you to always know how many games are going to be in each of these playoff episodes. In today's case, it's going to be the first two at home. I do need to set our playoff roster, and to do so, I will be sending down Cole Phillips. It's not so much a call-up or send-down, it's just the playoff roster, but I wanted to bring up a reliever, and in this case, it's going to be Jackie Sechrist. I'm realizing now that they did mess with the roster when I got into the postseason, so at least one player is not on it that should be. I should be able to change this, though, quite easily. I want Uribe on the playoff roster. I want Sechrist on the roster. But I do not want Gunnar Hoagland or Cole Phillips. Yeah, it messed with a lot of stuff here for the playoff roster. I really wish it wouldn't do that because we're also missing at least three players on the uh, bench. Miguel Cabrera, Deshaun Knowles, and Samad Taylor. Now, I know we are used to having 28 players now for the last couple episodes, so it might have to be shaken up a little bit. It had Baez on here. Obviously, we haven't been playing him. And as I alluded to a couple episodes ago, I said that our 26th player likely comes down to use Neil Cruz versus Zach Galoff. Samad Taylor can play third base defensively just fine, and Galoff, despite, you know, his promise hitting against lefties, I feel like we have other players we can play, and he's not going to make our playoff roster right now. So here is the playoff roster now finalized. A four-man rotation with Joe Michael, Michael Soroka, Logan Gilbert, and Ken Waldachuk. We do have Gregorio Uribe, Kendrick Haynes, Aaron Ashby will be the, the main first guy out. Ricky Griggs, Jonathan Hernandez, Andre Palante. Again, it keeps Sims on here. I didn't want that. So in that case, we might actually have Sechrist instead. I think I want... Maybe to go back to eight relievers because it's the playoffs and sometimes you have to manage these games differently. And you want more bullpen arms, especially if a guy gets rocked early on. So this should be the final, final roster. And again, for our lineups now, I have to set the batting order and everything. But we got our usual starters. We're a very healthy team with Daniel Susak, Miguel Cabrera. Deshaun Knowles, Samad Taylor, and Max Muncy making up our bench. Two infielders, two outfielders, and a catcher. I do think for this very first game, I'd like Deshaun Knowles to start in the place of Yusneel Cruz, who will then be a really good bench bat to have. I want to go with our best defense in the first game. 
We do have Vladimir Guerrero at third base here, and when you're playing a secondary position, you're effectively reducing a guy's ratings a bit, but he's held up over at third really well. I think he's played great defense in the games that we focused on, so I'm okay playing him at third. So we could play a better defensive infield, but it would mean taking Vargas out of the lineup to then play Max Muncie, and I don't want to make that trade-off. Now, before we get into our action today, let's get to know these Detroit Tigers a little bit. Haven't spent much of the series talking about them, but they've successfully rebuilt. Garrett Crochet closed that game out for them. They've developed a lot of their young players from the very beginning of the series, such as Riley Green and Spencer Torkelson. Green is a really good center fielder who looks to have a similar impact to Aaron Dunn. Jackson Job is going to be getting the start here in the first game. He is their ace pitcher, 25 years old, and four years of experience. Doesn't give up a lot of home runs. His advanced numbers are really good this year. Tamar Johnson, Luis Arias are two infielders with really good ratings and bring some offense to the table. Dalton Varsho, they must have acquired him from the Blue Jays at some point. His skills are on the decline. Wilmer Flores, Brendan McKay, Blake Franco. They've got some pretty decent pitchers here. And then Torkelson, 28 years old, just an 82. Thought his ratings might be a little bit higher. But he's certainly not put together those great offensive seasons. And maybe he's dealt with injuries just looking at the sporadic playing time. Garrett Hampson, Kerry Carpenter. Juan Young Cho is on the injured list, so he's not going to be playing here in this series, but he would have been an intriguing uh, bench bat. And we have gotten to see Pedro Duarte. We got to see his debut back in 2026. Seems like he's uh, still playing at a pretty high level, good on base and slugging numbers this year, but 104 games. I wonder if he also dealt with injury. Now, we do already know that Joe Michael is the Cy Young Award winner here in 2028, and he is set to make the first start of our playoff journey here in this franchise. I think that's enough build-up for this one. We've spent six years building up this team, really getting to know all the players, and now it's time, everybody. Postseason baseball in Oakland returns. And it's not Joe, but he actually gets game two. We're facing Wilmer Flores. We've waited a long time for this very episode. Nearly 200 hours in-game, in franchise mode of building this team up and playing all these games, going through all the storylines and the off-seasons. Wilmer Flores versus Joe Michael here in Game 1 of the American League Division Series. What a year it was for Joe Michael, taking home the Cy Young in his third major league season, winning 21 games and striking out 229 batters. He has become the face of the Oakland A's. And it's time, everybody, for playoff baseball to finally return. Fouled back at strike one on Anthony Paguero. So again... Games one and two today. It's so strange, you know, we play all these seasons, we're rebuilding. It is Sweeney knocking it down, but it will be an infield hit for Paguero. But the fact that now we're playing like games that really, really matter. This is, this is uncharted territory. And even like, yes, we had a playoff season this year, but we've been up comfortably in the division for a long time. We haven't had a game with a playoff atmosphere until now. Strike to Torkelson. So it's just we've played hundreds of games and now suddenly you got to gear your mind for the postseason. It's tough. 0-2 on Torkelson. Michael got him to extend the zone. That curveball has been a weapon. 0-2 again. Fastball missing high. And it's popped up. Let it go down. I wanted to double him up there. There's the lineup for Detroit. Not too many eye-popping averages, at least in the, the good way. Like a 196 on Garrett Hampson hitting fifth is 
Certainly not ideal. Riley Green hitting 182 here in the postseason. The Tigers have four righties, one lefty, as they do send the runner, and that avoids the double play. But their only lefty is their fifth starter, so we'd have to go the distance here to see our left-handed lineup, which I'm a lot more uncomfortable using. He waved at it, trying to advance. Soderstrom throws him out. Paguero is out, and that is going to bring us to the bottom of the first. And I made sure before starting up the recording today, I got some practice swings in. Didn't quite like my swing in the last episode. I wanted to get at least a little practice before the biggest at-bats ever in the series. Wilmer Flores, 152 innings. He'll rack up some strikeouts, but a 1.59 whip. If you can avoid the strikeouts, there's damage to be done. And here is Aaron Don, who hit 25 homers this season, 93 RBIs. I don't have to remind most of you that he was the first pick of the entire series. Joe Michael was our second first-round pick, and now we're in this position because those two players are absolute superstars. 2-0 to Aaron Don. Missing high, and now a 3-1 count. Arise awaiting his chance. Full count. The payoff pitch. Missing high, and we have our first base runner. Aaron Don. Do we look to steal a bag here in the first inning? Not on the first pitch to Arise. 2-0. We might get something nice here. Not that nice. It's a strike on the outside. Extend the lead. Don goes, and it's a drive to the gap in right center. That is off the top of the wall. A rise to second. A 1-0 Oakland lead. Aaron Don scores. That did not miss by much. You like that sound, of course, that it was headed out to right center? Man, just a few inches off the top of the wall there. A fast start for Oakland. Guerrero. A little aggressive. Right field and hit well. Arise is set up. It is caught. And Arise trying to advance to third base is there safely with one gone. 32 homers from Guerrero. And 30 plus as well from Reyes as he skies it into left field. And we are going to be testing on this. Arise is going to head home. The throw is online, but Arise is safe. And we have brought home the first two runs of the ALDS. Tyler Soderstrom was one of our first stars developed in the franchise. He's a two-time All-Star, one of the best hitting catchers in baseball, finding some serious pop this year. And he drills it to center. That's back. And it is run down to finish up the inning. But we came and got our two early runs. And now we go hand that off to Joe Michael, your Cy Young winner. He hit him, just missing. Sometimes those fastballs get away from him. Michael will get a hit by pitch here and there. Garrett Hampson, who has very good speed. That's on the ground. Could be two if we're quick. And we are. Double play. Two strikes on Ricky Lynn. Saw in that last game that he was an all-star this year. And he strikes out looking on the fastball. What a year Miguel Vargas put together. I'm so happy to see this trade finally working out for us. 
Now, this is going to lead to some increased contract demands for him, but we don't care about that right now. We just want to get wins in the postseason. Vargas bloops a single into center. And I did choose to start Deshaun Knowles in this game instead of Neil Cruz. So he bats eighth. And again on the first pitch, it's in the air, center field. Long run, but caught. And then Dylan Carlson, who rounds out the starting nine. One on, two outs. He did give us some power this year from time to time. We're getting a lot of first pitches here. I'm all over. Oh, my. Keep it fair. Carlson back. Carlson gone. Four nothing Oakland. On a 1-2 fastball. I told you we had a little pop this year. I don't think I've hit many home runs with him. I'm pretty sure I've hit more with Fran Mil Reyes this year. And I didn't hit any for like the first six months of the year. Or like first three or four. Dylan Carlson. Deep to right. Not a bad start. That was a cutter, not a fastball. A four-run lead for Cy Young Award winner Joe Michael. What a beautiful start. High fly, Don retreating, but room in center. He makes the catch. Right on the outside corner. So they picked up Tamar Johnson not long ago from Pittsburgh. He's been key for them so far in the postseason, hitting 455. Three and two with Michael missing with these two strike pitches. We come back with the fastball. It is fouled off. Nasty curveball strike three. There was a time with a 3-2 count. I wouldn't throw much beyond a fastball trying to catch a lot of the plate. And now Michael hits the corners a lot better. He's got that curveball that I'm obviously having a lot of fun with. Nine hitter Aaron Shunk lines it softly and we're through two and a half. That's a rise, keeping it foul. A rise again right center field. That's off the warning track this time, but it's another double. Now, hypothetically, if whoever wins game one is also the team that wins game two, obviously that sets up an elimination game, game three. I want elimination games to get their own episode because those are a big deal obviously but it's possible if a team gets hot early in a series you end up with a lot of potential elimination games so the plan is still to do one game per episode there but they will be coming out more frequently it's not going to be like game four elimination game and then two days later game five like it needs to pace well and those will be shorter videos faster to make so when there are elimination games probably going to see back-to-back -back days with uploads and sometimes you know three in a row maybe all depends on you know my full upload schedule and what the week looks like I don't really post a lot on Sundays and I have my main channel as well but when there are elimination game episodes you know things will go quicker but if we end up splitting these first two games then game three will not be an elimination game, and that would mean next episode will also be two games. Game four would be an elimination game either way, but it doesn't spoil anything knowing like the video length, basically. Got to think about that here on YouTube. That's right down the middle, man. Just swing. Trying to bring home Luisa Rice. Three and two. Ah, man, I don't know why 
on some of these at bats. I'm just not seeing fastballs down the middle well. That should be an easy swing. Soderstrom now with two gone. And a rocket drilled to center field. And that'll take care of it. A run scores. And Soderstrom's into second base. And they have already made a pitching change. Blake Franco will come in. They do bring in the lefty already, which is a good call here, especially if he can go multiple innings. That can definitely slow things down with, what do we usually start? Four lefties? And it's like four of our top six. But you do then risk guys like Vargas, who are way better against lefties and more dangerous. The bottom of the order gets a little more scarier now. Strike three on Sweeney. 5 nothing Oakland. Big cut there by Torkelson, trying to get the Tigers' first run aboard. 1-2, off the corner. All reliable. Fastball left field, and Deshaun Knowles makes the catch. Michael's pitch count is in a great spot. 52 pitches in now with one gone in the fifth. Tiger's not managing much off of him right now. Went around, and that's strike two on Garrett Hampson. That's pulled into left, and it should be extras as Knowles gathers. And it's a one-out double for Garrett Hampson. Got to start somewhere if you're Detroit. Hampson set up to tag. Carlson makes the catch. And he's got an arm that Hampson is not interested in testing. Tyler Malone, a lefty-lefty matchup for a former Rule 5 pickup. He's in the hole 0-2. Oh, what a curve! Strike three! Five to nothing, Oakland. And we've got Vladimir Guerrero along with Fran Mil Reyes up here coming. Three, you know. Swung there at ball four. But there is ball four on the 3 2 pitch. So we got Reyes up now. Punched it to second for a second out. So Franco has mostly settled things down now. We struggle a bit more against lefty pitching. And that should end the inning. We're through five, up five. It's been a dominant outing thus far for Joe Michael and the Tigers... I've only managed two hits off of him. 0-2 oh, on Tamar Johnson. Lays off the curve. But then he blows a fastball by him. He doesn't even have the big strikeout numbers right now. Like just in the last episode, we had uh, nine strikeouts through five innings. Oh my! Aaron Shunk to deep left. He catches a hold of the fastball and the Tigers are on the board. Shutout broken up. But basically I was saying Michael is not getting as many strikeouts as he usually does. He's just gotten a lot of weak, harmless contact. Until that pitch. Four run game now. In the air for Knowles in left. Now, I'm not worried about Michael giving up one homer, but it's probably good in these late innings to always have somebody getting ready because you never know what, what can happen out of nowhere, essentially. Where's, uh... Oh, they got Ashby here listed as a starter. I don't know if that screws with things. I have to have somebody there listed as a starter. I should probably use our eighth bullpen option. 
That's a grounder. And we are through five and a half. That's going to left center. A left on left. Extra base hit. Trey Sweeney to second base. Vargas is one for two, and he'll try to at least advance. On the first pitch, though, he rolls it over and grounds out. Same result here for Knowles on a changeup that was middle-middle. Ripped it right to short. Tigers keeping this a four-run game, hoping they can keep chipping away. Seventh inning, nine outs left for Detroit. And a grounder into right field, base hit. Urias is someone I do want to be careful with here. I think he's gotten some good splits against lefties. Nasty pitch right there. Keep it low. Good pitch. Tough one to take there. Three and two. Got him! Clipping the zone. It's a good pitch from a great pitcher. Garrett Hampson. Falling behind, three and one. Pitch count is in the 80s for Joe. And it's lifted for Knowles. Over and under. Two gone. Ricky Lynn. That curveball stays down. Ooh, got away with that changeup. This could be the last inning here for Joe Michael. Starting to miss over the plate a bit too often. Smothered by Soderstrom. I think we'll be done with the curve today. Popped up into right field. And Dylan Carlson puts away the top half of the seventh. And they're emptying their lefties out here in the first game. So they're going to try to keep it to five and hope they can come back. But I think we have a pretty good lineup here even against lefties when you consider we got Guerrero and Reyes back to back. Guerrero just doesn't actually have better ratings against lefties. He's just a right-handed batter that, you know, he's better against righties. Not terrible against lefties, but some righties are much better when they face lefties. And let's get Vladdy to the plate now with two down. Howie Whalen. Four pitches. Got a full count. We're going to make him work for this final out. Ah, just missed it. But they have quieted our offense after the early runs. And we are going to make our pitching change here in the eighth inning and bring in lefty Aaron Ashby. The all-star who's been one of our best pitchers this season. They have a pair of lefties up here to start the eighth, and we want to keep the lefty-lefty matchups. That could be playable. Knowles across the line makes the catch. Nasty movement on his slider as he hits the outside corner. 1-2 on Johnson. And a strike three looking. Nailed the outside. Oh, and two on Shunk. Got him! And we'll have a chance to seal game one in the ninth. They bring in Ken Willis. And he'll face the heart of our order in a four-run game. I don't know yet who's getting the ninth inning. Right now, I'm thinking Jonathan Hernandez in a four-run game. 
Base hit right field from Reyes. Second baseman must have been shifted over quite a bit. Just realized I haven't really thought about uh, defensive shifting a whole lot in a long time, and it's kind of nice. Tyler Soderstrom. One for three. Got a good one. We are going to be running here for Reyes. Let's get you Sneal Cruz into the game. He can come off the bench as a hitter, a runner. He can make an impact. Three and one. Up the middle. Base hit center field. Cruz. Oh, he got halfway home and turned back. I wanted to, but it wasn't going to work. Two on, nobody gone. Base hit center field. Now wave them home. Cruz will score. 6 1 Oakland. And Vargas is hit. We have loaded the bases with nobody out. Deshaun Knowles is the batter. That is down the line, and that is fair. Extra bases. We're going to score two on a double from Deshaun Knowles. It was a short outing for Ken Willis, who has yet to record an out. 8-1 to one, Oakland. And now Carlson's hit. What's going on here at the Tigers' bullpen? Aaron Don as the base is loaded. Oh, my! Grand slam! Break it open, Aaron! 12-1! I think the Tigers are ready for game two. I mean, that was a curveball right over the middle, man. Just an easy pitch right there, a slurve. Same thing. Close enough. This means you, Sneal Cruz, is going to get a postseason at bat. Come on, Detroit. Bring in a position player. You know you want to. I want to see Torkelson pitch. Ah, strike three. The first out comes after we have already plated seven runs in the inning and are beginning to look for players to come off the bench. Weekly hit, basically a bunt. Taylor out. And Eusneo Cruz makes his postseason debut in a game we're comfortably leading. No pressure on this swing or this at-bat whatsoever. In the air to right. Late on the swing, and that finishes up the eighth inning. We're going to go into the ninth and make a pitching change. Jackie Sechrist will be making his playoff debut. He has only pitched, I think, two innings in the major leagues. He's up 11. Flip to Carlson. What is that run he was doing? What was that shuffle? Quit messing around just because we're up 11. Good cutter there on Torkelson. One and two from Sechrist. Got him! Popped up for Soderstrom. What a run, everybody. Our first playoff win is recorded. 12-1 Oakland with seven in the eighth inning. 
We didn't want to make anything happen in the ninth for Detroit. Put it out of reach. Joe Michael gets the win, his first postseason victory, going seven innings. And the Oakland Athletics lead the series one to nothing. We got the damage started early on, a big offensive output. Luis Arise had our first big swing. Dylan Carlson gave us a two-run shot. And there wasn't a whole lot more until that eighth inning. Aaron Schunk gave them a solo homer to break up a Joe Michael shutout. And then late in the game, Aaron Don served up a grand slam to right field. And now none of this matters anymore. Get ready for game two. Tampa Bay won their first game against the Cleveland Guardians. They're up in the series. San Francisco over Atlanta. That would be a huge upset. Atlanta had the best record in baseball and the highest scoring offense. They're down 2-0. And then the Cubs and Dodgers are currently split. But let's get into game two. Michael Soroka versus Jackson Job. We make no changes from that first game. They actually have, a, I think, a different lineup. I don't remember Varsho in that first game. Did he play? I can't remember. But we're not making any changes after a perfect start. But now all that gets put aside as we try to take a 2-0 advantage. Michael Soroka, 195 innings. And a 1.18 whip this season. Expecting him to opt out of his deal once we finish up the year. It's been a great run with him on this team. And he's done an outstanding job for, what, four years? Five years? Forget how long it's been at this point. In on the hands, it's Hampson. Yeah, he didn't lead off the first game. They actually changed things up, even though it's... Oh, because... Michael's a lefty, and this is a right-handed pitcher game, so it's a little different. That's one gun. We're not going to see Pedro Duarte, though, start either game. I thought by now, because when we saw him earlier in the series, he was an interesting player. He did well against us, and I boosted, like, his potential. But it appears he's not cracking the starting nine right now. That's one we'll take right there. Riley Green, a 2028 All-Star. Great to see a packed house here for postseason action. Gone on strikes. Great start for Soroka. Now we hope we save some offense for game two. In his playoff debut, Jackson Job went six innings. Must have given up a few runs and struck out four. And here we go. A fresh ball game. Got to put 12 to 1 aside. Good curveball. That one actually got down. He's throwing three straight. If we're facing a curveball heavy pitcher, that sounds good to me. Missing inside, and we've gone from 0-2 to 3-2. No, it's strike three. Luis Arise was a Silver Slugger Award winner this year. Second time in his career. Got it once with uh, the Twins. Or actually, it would have been, uh, yeah, the Twins. 22. And another hit by pitch. That's at least the third we've had so far in this series. Vladimir Guerrero. Turning on one a bit early. Ah, oh, what am I doing flailing at that? Those low sliders are some of the toughest pitches to just like see properly for me. Under it, and popped up into foul territory. There's a lot of room to work with as we're through one. 
Like the way Soroka's dealing here early on. Already two strikes on Luis Urias. Got him. Four outs on 12 pitches. Yeah, Soroka. He might be on today. Just saying. Went around and that's 0-2. Oh, he's feeling it right now. So Varsho did not play in game one. They don't bother with him against lefties. He did hit 28 homers this year. Ooh, that's a miss. But falling behind three and one. First time Soroka's really fallen behind in a count today. Good cutter. And another good one as he hits it to Knowles. And that's the inning. One out here in the second for Oakland. It's Trey Sweeney on the ground past the diving second baseman. Way outside. I thought that would go to the backstop. Miguel Vargas. Big cut there, but a good curve. He's not been really missing with those often. Job likes to throw a lot of off speed, though, is what I'm seeing. And then lulls you to sleep. Brings back a fastball right down the middle. It's all about sequencing. That doesn't have to be a meatball. Depends when you throw it. Three and two. And that's lifted into right. Playable. Job's been tough. Let's see if Deshaun Knowles gives us something with two gone. Man, two fastballs fouled back. Very hittable with good timing. That hits him. Another hit batter. What is it in this series? Can we get a bench warning here? Two on, two gone. That nearly hit Carlson. Oh, didn't have to swing at that, but it was good timing at least. A lot of fastballs here to Carlson. Here is pitch eight. Taken. How about we get to pitch 10 already? Everything's been pretty up. Missing. Now we can send everyone early. Don's on deck with two gone. No! Strike three on Carlson. I think I was waiting that entire at-bat for him to deviate from what he was doing, and he just didn't do it. Well, I'd like to get that one. 3-0 on Termar Johnson. That's in there. A good cutter, but it's turned on and belted to right center. And Johnson's going to be in at second base. Carry Carpenter in the air, and we'll see if Johnson feels like testing that. Probably not. He's got an awesome cutter. One and two on Malone. And a good change up that he fights off. Oh, what a pitch. High and tight cutter. With the count, two and two. Oh, that hits him. Cutter forgot to cut. A lot of hit by pitches in this series. Torkelson. Right field. Carlson in. Makes the catch. In that last inning, we made Job throw a lot of pitches. Got to look at a lot of his stuff. Don cranked right field. But that is playable. He gave us a really good look at his high fastball. He doesn't throw an overpowering fastball, so I think we're going to have opportunities there if we can barrel him up like that last swing. He doesn't try to throw it down very much. He attacks high with his fastball, 
And then he throws a lot of breaking balls off of it. Base hit left field from Luis Arise. But a grounder, and that could be 5-4-3. Double play. And seven innings out of Joe Michael. Soroka's off to a very strong start. Both pitchers have been on their games. Two and two, it's high. Full count to Luis Urias. And he takes ball four low. He takes off immediately as Lynn hooks it foul. Doesn't have the best speed. That was a hit and run they put on there. That's taken. And the count's three and two. Big pitch here for Michael Soroka. And he missed. Back-to-back -back walks. Varsho. Yeah, they're attacking these first pitches. Man, he's not calling that corner. We haven't gotten that one. Two and two on Varsho. Need a good pitch. Got him! Strike three! And Tamar Johnson will bat now. Hung the change up, and that is out of reach. Nearly down the line. That's a foul ball. 0-2. Oh Hit it weakly. Hustling down the line. Out! On the Guerrero throw. Low scoring pitchers duel here in game two. Just three combined hits, eight combined left on base. Guess there's been a fair amount of walks and hit batters. 2 0 on Reyes. Not giving him a get me over fastball, that's for sure. I think you just risk the walk at this point. 3 0. It's a good pitch. Fans trying to get a chant going, but they need a little energy, a little extra boost. And he got him! Coming back! I mean, those were three pretty tough pitches there. 3-0. That's, that's a really good job of pitching by Jackson Job. That was a good pitch to rip. Oh, front door curve? Swung way late on this. Kind of realized late it was going to maybe be a strike. Yeah, he's, he's locked in right now. He's throwing a lot of good pitches. One and two from Jackson Job. Missed away. Way out in front of that two-seamer. Job strikes out the side. It's the kind of start Detroit needed after a day like yesterday. Or a day like a half hour ago. But Soroka's also locked in. And we got ourselves good old-fashioned postseason baseball here. This is a lot of fun, though. Just finally playing these more intense games. That's what separates, I think, like the NFL from any other sport is a week three game can have a playoff atmosphere. A week one game can have a playoff atmosphere. It just depends on who's playing and what kind of game you get. But you miss this feeling playing baseball unless you're one of those teams that's riding the, the line in the playoff standings all year. You're never really fighting for your season. 0-2, oh lifted, and arise Camp Dunder. No. I don't know, this no. strike zone, I'm not a fan of it today. 2-2 two two on Hampson, that's away. 
And it's punched up the middle. Vargas makes the play. Soroka through five. Still waiting on that first run here in game two. And we got a drive hit in the air. Deep left field. That is gone. Home run, Miguel Vargas. 1-0 Oakland. We got one to turn on there. Took a little while to wake the offense up. I want to see the replay of that pitch. That was just a changeup that was a little elevated. We get in front of it, barrel it up. One, nothing. So as we look ahead to the sixth inning, I should probably start getting some action here in the pen. And I forgot to make Ashby a, a reliever there, but he didn't have a long outing in the first game, so he's certainly available here. Up the line, that's fair, but played well by Torkelson. Aaron Don hitting with two outs. That's not called. Not the best strike zone today. It's a 3-1 count. Job, 71st pitch. A blast hit to center field. Don puts a charge behind it, and it's run down on the warning track. Wow. So how much more do we get out of Soroka? It's the third trip through the order. He's up to 81 pitches, getting a little low on energy. And we're facing their best hitters. I still trust him here. 0-2 on Torkelson, and he popped him up. Great start here in the sixth. We have two getting warm, Haynes and Ashby. But I think that I would look to make a change, ideally, in a couple batters. That's going to turn foul, 0-2 on green. And that fourth inning was a bit rough on him. Came back for a better fifth. And a strikeout of Green. Throwing a good changeup still. Now let's hope the cutter doesn't go too far in. There we go. One and two. He should have had strike three. I don't know. The strike zone's just tight today. All the way around. Three and two on Urias. Weekly hit under Vargas. That one was one where you're really not sure if you have to dive or not. We're going to make a change here, I think. I want one good out from Kendrick Haynes. I want to go with the fresh arm here. We got a really good outing again, though, from Michael Soroka. I love the way Haynes finished the year. Like, his ERA was really high from a rough first month of the season, and then he got sent down, had his most consistent year in the minors, and then came back, fixed his numbers, and is now our second guy out of the pen in this postseason. Ricky Lynn. I've really liked the cutter of Haynes in recent games. A good slider. And that's a perfect cutter there, but Lynn fights it off. Fighting off these two strike pitches. Throwing everything we got at him here. Three and two. It's Varsho on deck. And he'll hit in the next inning. Strike three on Ricky Lynn. They have also made a change, and this is Troy Melton, who doesn't have a statistic recorded to show us. Ashby will pitch in the next inning, and we're also going to be getting Griggs up and 
probably Hernandez afterwards. Just one batter for Kendrick Haynes. A one nothing game though, as we would of course like to tack on a little bit more. Bottom six. Standard arsenal of pitches for Troy Melton. Sharply hit to first base, one gone. I don't know with this inconsistent strike zone, man. This is not a postseason umpiring performance, that's for sure. Ooh, diving play at third. Guerrero's out. How does he get a pitch that good to hit and he only gets 77 miles per hour off the bat? Hard to barrel him up sometimes. Three pitches inside to Reyes. Melton looking for a 1-2-3 inning. And a drive hit to center. Safely into the center fielder's glove as we go on to the seventh. Still 1-0 and we'll make the change with Ashby. And we're also going to get Hernandez up. So they don't play Varsho against lefties. But now we're in control. He went around. Ashby the 0-2. Fought it off. Let's do it again. Dude. How is this a 1-0 game with this strike zone? Shouldn't this be favoring more offense? One gone. Another borderline pitch that goes the batter's way. Weekly hit. It's a fair ball, and Soderstrom makes the play. Two strikes on Carey Carpenter. Ashby delivering outside. Sharply hit. A single to center. The inning continues. Four straight lefties. Tyler Malone. Fouled off the sinker. We're two and two on Tyler Malone. Takes low 3-2 with Hampson on deck. Got him on the 12-6 curveball. Not the sharpest, but we'll take it. Another zero put on the board as we go bottom seven. They had a lefty getting warm. I thought they'd make a move here. But they will keep in Troy Milton. Rolled it over. Melton just keeps getting outs. Miguel Vargas is the only reason there's a run scored in this game. Two gone in the seventh. And he drives one out to left again, but this one wasn't as good as the first. We're going to make a pitching change here in the eighth inning. And it's going to be Jonathan Hernandez. He did not instill a lot of confidence in me down the stretch. We are also going to be getting Joan Duran warm. Top of the order here for the Tigers. You could argue I should have Duran in this inning and let somebody else close because it's their best hitters. Hampson puts down a bunt. It'll be Guerrero in time. I think that was a really good call. It was also a pretty good bunt. Gonna throw a bunch of sliders here with Hernandez and just hope he keeps him down. Base hit, Torkelson. Tying runs on. Riley Green is the batter. So we're gonna get into their lefties here. Good change. I don't dare throw a slider to a lefty with him right now. 
That was trouble. Right to arise, tags the runner, double play. This lead will go into the ninth inning. And we'll see if we can deliver a little bit more, but I'd like to make a move here in the eighth. You sneal, Cruz will come off the bench to hit for Deshaun Knowles. Samad Taylor will then play defensively in the ninth. We want to get Cruz an at-bat here against Troy Melton. Outside. He puts it in the air. Is under it. And it's out number one. That's to center. Base hit Carlson. You got to make a move here, right? Bring in your lefty. I'm surprised they're leaving him in there so much. But, like, the CPU doesn't, I don't, I don't think, manages games differently if it's regular season or postseason. I think here in a one-run game, you go with your lefty-lefty. That could be a double play. You know what? Troy Melton gets the job done anyway. He just pitched like three or four zeros. But we're on to the ninth inning. You know what that means. 51 of 54 saves during the regular season. An early season trade acquisition because we needed a closer of his caliber. Jawan Duran here in the postseason. Samad Taylor is in left field. Luis Surias leads things off for the Tigers. Hoping to continue this game and not return to Detroit down 2 0. 0 2 on Arias. Chased it, strike three. Go into the slider. That's one. Fouled off by Ricky Lynn. 0 for 2. 103. And it came off the bat the same speed. 1 2. Struck him out. And just one out away from a 2 0 division series lead. Looking to maintain home field advantage. It's Dalton Varsho. Did he go? Yes! Upstairs. Out in front, 2-2. Two -two. One pitch away. Got him! A shutout for Oakland and a 2-0 series advantage in the American League Division Series. We win the first game by 11, and the second, just a 1-0 game. Outstanding pitching across these two games for us. Just enough offense in game two. Not many hits. I thought Joe pitched really well, and so did that, uh, that pitcher that came out of the bullpen. He didn't let us do much. You want to take care of your home games? We did that today. The series will now shift to Detroit. And that means game three is an elimination game. And we'll be getting its own episode. So I want to give you guys a proposed schedule. This video will be going up on Friday. I don't usually post on Sundays. So I think we're going to be looking at Game 3 Monday, Game 4, if necessary, Tuesday, and we'll go from there. But what an outstanding start. We've invested a lot into our starting pitching in this series, and Soroka and Michael delivered for us just as you hoped they would in the first two games. At the same time, the Tampa Bay Rays are up on the Cleveland Guardians right now, two games to none, and we have uh, no other games played yet. So we have our travel day we can sim through, and then the Dodgers are up on the Cubs, Atlanta got a game one, 
So those series are 2-1 to one each. But now a lot of elimination games as we prepare for the ALCS. Our next game is going to be Logan Gilbert versus Matt Manning. And if we can win, we're ALCS bound. Arise and Sweeney picked up three hits in the games for us today. Vargas, Carlson, Soderstrom all had two. We hit three home runs, five doubles, played clean defense, clean pitching. And then the pitching schedule is going to be pretty simple. We have Gilbert in game three, while the Chuck pitches game four if we need to. And then, of course, if it goes to a game five, Joe Michael at home. But I hope you enjoyed this very first postseason episode of the Oakland A's franchise. It's been a heck of a ride to get to this point. And now we're just one win away from advancing and winning our first playoff series. Thank you all for supporting the series to this point. I hope that the run has been worth it and that you're enjoying the playoff action now that it's here. Please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll be back with more playoff baseball here soon. Have a great day, everybody, and see you next time.